In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with the robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My My soul soul rejoices rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejects the God of the God my Savior, rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will be will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit. 
Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing. We've technically hit the midpoint of our Advent preparation for Christmas. To mark this joy, priests wear rose, not pink, vestments, and the rose, not pink, candle is lit on our Advent wreath to show that even though we're still in this preparation period of penance and prayer and other good works that is purple, nevertheless, we're halfway through. We all know that we have a short Advent this year. Just think, next week we'll be getting ready for Christmas. Nevertheless, there's another important point. Today on December 17th, we begin what is called the octave of Christmas, meaning it's that final push of celebration. In the priest's liturgy of the hours, our breviary, it goes through really the whole passages leading up to Christmas. And in our daily mass readings, we'll be doing the same. So perhaps if you have time off this week especially, and next, well, take time for daily mass because it really helps us meditate on these passages that are taken from the Gospels to put us into the right disposition for the gift of Christmas that we'll soon celebrate. The joy of Christmas, though, that we're looking for, and the joy that we really mark today with Gaudete Sunday, is not some kind of a fleeting happiness. So it's not some kind of a happiness we might find on a one day after a lot of hustle and bustle for several weeks of getting ready. 
And it's not some kind of happiness from a series of Bacchanalia festivals where we have parties and social gatherings. It's not even from a whole just day of gift giving, like it's some economic gift giving day. Rather, the joy is deeper. The joy has to be in Christ. To just sort of highlight this, on December the 7th, the Wall Street Journal on the front page had an article. Indulge me. The article it was entitled, And You Thought PowerPoint Presentations Couldn't Get Worse. Well, here it goes. After getting some dud Christmas presents last year, Ben Galvani decided his family needed more specific instructions. This year, the 11-year-old created a nine-page slide deck detailing every item on his list. One slide is dedicated to sneakers, including two types of Air Jordans, another one jerseys, has pictures of gear from NBA athletes such as Stephen Curry and Jordan Poole. Then there are video games for his Xbox and a temporary tattoo kit, <laughs> the latter listed under miscellaneous. My family, quote, my family was starting to give me money, said Ben, who lives in New York and is in sixth grade. This way, I can tell them exactly what I want. I think he's missing the point of Christmas. And I think his parents are too, if they're going through that slide presentation. I can't tell you what my father would say or do if I did something like that. But anyway, so many people miss the point of Christmas. And therefore, they really don't find the joy that we celebrate. Maybe some fleeting happiness for a day, but really not the joy. And so, my brothers and sisters, this joy that we want to focus on can only come from Jesus. It's really living in the presence of Christ who came into this world and was born that first Christmas. He brings the joy of God's love, of God's presence, of God's hope to each one of us. We live in that presence through what we call sanctifying grace, that indwelling, sharing in the life and love of the Holy Trinity, first given by baptism, but continually renewed and strengthened through our other sacraments. We're called to really then focus on that gift of Christ to find real joy. This is why in our beautiful responsorial psalm, which really isn't a psalm, it's taken from Mary's Magnificat in the Gospel of St. Luke's, our Blessed Mother could say, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary lived in the presence of God. And because of that, no matter what, she could rejoice. So we want to find that kind of joy. So this last span before Christmas, I offer you three ways. The first way is go to confession. If you haven't taken time for a good confession this Advent season, now's the time to do so. This Wednesday, for instance, at 7, we have our holy hour, we have all day exposition, but three priests will be here to hear confessions. Don't wait till the last minute on Saturday afternoon, unless you really want a big penance. But anyway, so the idea though is sin takes us away from the presence of God. We may not even realize we aren't living in the presence of God. That's what sin can do. We can become comfortable with sin. It no longer has a sting to it. So we want to take time for that examination of conscience, go deep into our lives, repent, go to confession. When we hear the beautiful words of absolution, which really is Jesus speaking to us, we hear, I absolve you of your sins. They're washed away. Our Lord pours forth through the Holy Spirit that sanctifying grace 
that forgives, heals, and strengthens. What joy we should have to walk out of that confessional and know we're forgiven. Past is past. We're starting anew. I can honestly say that every time I go to confession, I feel better. So take that time. No matter how long it's been, doesn't matter. Don't be afraid. We have even little helper guides on the tables. Just take the time for good confession. A forgiven heart is truly a joyful heart. And so, again, take the time. Second point is, take time for prayer. Now, I hope you do take time for prayer each day. But don't let all the hustle allow you to skip prayer. I encourage you, though, this week, find a half hour. We can all do that when we think about how much time we spend on our cell phones and things like that. We can take a half hour and make an appointment with the Lord. Come here to church, sit before the tabernacle, or go to the Adoration Chapel, gaze on the Blessed Sacrament, but focus on giving thanks for all that you have. We all receive those Christmas cards that have letters. And I received one from my friends that I've known for over 20 years now. It was really quite a beautiful letter because it wasn't just like this long listing of things, you know, paragraphs of who did what. But really it began with, for the gift of, and then went on, and the last part was, we thank you, Lord Jesus. So for instance, some of the highlights were, for the gift of, little Mary, who was born, our great niece, we thank you, Lord. For the gift of my dad, who died this year at the age of 96, we thank you, Lord. For the gift of our family and our children, we thank you, Lord. For our garden this summer, that despite the drought and the critters gave us abundant produce, we thank you, Lord. For the gift of our faith and our church, the Mass, and the Holy Eucharist, we thank you, Lord. When we really pause and think about all that we have, what a grateful, joyful heart we will have. A grateful heart is always a joyful heart. So take time to think about all the ways that God has blessed you. St. Paul, in our second passage, says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. Granted, we don't actually pray every minute on our knees or in church, but we can have that grateful heart. I think that's what St. Paul was meaning. We can live in the presence of Christ. That is what he meant. So take time. Make that appointment and list your gratitude. Then finally, third point is, find joy in your family. Oftentimes, in our world today, families are so busy doing many things going here and there, they don't really take time for each other. You probably have time off from school beginning perhaps Thursday, Wednesday afternoon, time off from work next week. Make sure there's some good family time. This is where we too can also find joy. I'd say, for instance, have a movie night, but a Christmas movie. So it could be something like A Christmas Carol with George C. Scott, or The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, or Charlie Brown's Christmas, or it could be A Wonderful Life. All those things bring happiness, and they have good points. It's a real opportunity for parents to talk with their kids about the meanings behind those movies. For instance, I love George C. Scott's A Christmas Carol. It's really Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. But every year, there's always a renewed insight, very spiritual story. Now, you have to be careful. About two years ago, Father McShirley said to me, oh, let's watch a Christmas movie. And I said, okay, sounds fun. So we went up to our old TV room, watched a Christmas movie, and I, little did I know that the Christmas movie had to be, oh God, I just skipped my mind here. Oh, nuts. Anyway, what was it? Something, oh shoot, what was it? It was with, 
can't even think of his name now. But anyways, a shoot 'em up movie. So it was this shoot 'em up movie, and I thought, I turned to him at one point, about halfway through, and I said, Peter, what's this have to do with Christmas? And he, oh, it was Deadly Force One, maybe? Is that a movie? What? Die Hard, thank you. Die Hard One. So anyway, with Bruce Willis, thank you. So nice interaction here. So anyway, in the middle of the movie, I said, Peter, what's this have to do with Christmas? He said, well, it's happening on Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay. So I said, well, does it have a happy ending? He said, oh, yeah, it does. It has a happy ending. All right. So much. So find a good Christmas movie. Thank you for the input there. So, Die Hard 1. Now, next time I should write that down. Second thing you could do, how about some Christmas carols? Sit around the family and sing some Christmas carols. Last night we had a wonderful presentation here at church. We had our adult choir, children's choir, the Young Men's Ensemble from the Washington's Children Choir. Church was pretty full and it was wonderful. Really brought a lot of joy to our hearts. Also as a family, Think about doing something good for someone else. Maybe you have a neighbor who's alone, an elderly neighbor, or maybe you have a family that has a newborn in the neighborhood. Why not go over, bring something, bring a cake, cookies, maybe even bring a meal, especially for a newborn family. All of those things are important because they give us joy. St. Francis of Assisi, the other St. Francis we hear about so often, tells us that it is in giving that we receive. So find that joy. So my brothers and sisters, three ways to find joy between now and Christmas, real joy. But be careful because there's always the Grinches, the Grinches at Christmas that want you to be miserable. Some of these are our relatives that we may have to endure. The relative who says, I don't believe in God anymore. I don't go to church. This does have no meaning anymore. Well, snarky self my ass that I am, I'd say, well, then give me back your gift because I'm not doing economic exchanges here. <laughs> or, as Mother Teresa said, Mother Teresa was at a college and she was talking about the faith and living life as a Christian. Some college students stood up and said, Mother Teresa, I don't believe any of that. I don't believe in God. None of this makes sense to me. And she just paused and with very tender care said, I'm so sorry. Jesus loves you so much. I'm going to pray for you that you'll find the love of Jesus. Well, with that, the kid broke down in tears and sat down. We can bring joy. John the Baptist came to make the way for the Lord. He fulfilled the prophet Isaiah to bring good news to the poor. That's what we're called to do. So don't let the Grinches get you down, but rather bring the joy of Christ to them. So my brothers and sisters, Gaudete Sunday, a time of rejoicing. But remember, joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, you. Begins with Jesus, you have to put him into your lives. You have to make him present and share him with others. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and his seat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic, and intelligence services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of war in Ukraine and Israel, the withdrawal of Russia and the defeat of Hamas, the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church, stopped attending Mass, or abandon the faith, that this Advent they will be moved to reconciliation and renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Buono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and for our deceased, especially Margaret Brooks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the Poor Clares, a cloistered community of sisters in Alexandria who depend upon others for their livelihood. Please take home a copy of the bulletin with the Christmas Mass schedule. Also, we have our parish calendars available, but at this time, please take one per family. And then if you come during the week, take as many as you want. They make great Christmas gifts. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen.